Hey guys, Jamin here, PC Monkey, bringing you another do-it-yourself computer video today. Uh, the computer I have on me right now is an Acer Aspire 1 Cloudbook 11. In this video, I'm going to show you how to access the heatsink assembly as well as the CPU. So the first step in any repair, make sure your work environment is safe and you're not going to damage your computer without knowing it. Uh, some people go for the anti-static bracelet around their wrist. Uh, me, myself, I have an anti-static pad uh, that rests on top of my desk that my computer and my tool sit on. Uh, that guards against damage to the computer while I'm working on it and while I have it open. So after unplugging our power adapter, we're going to flip the computer over and we're going to remove our bottom case. There's four screws, one in each corner, and there's one screw under each of these two rubber stoppers. There are no screws under the four rubber feet. A little helpful hint on taking out screws, not all screws are the same size. Your bottom case screws will not be the same size as your motherboard screws. Those will not be the same size as your hard drive screws. So make sure as you're going into this computer or any computer, you're keeping your screws separate and grouped up by size. I'm going to use my small flat pry tool to take off these rubber stoppers. They're usually just held on by double sided tape. After that, I'm going to take my small flat metal pry tool. I'm going to go along the seam of the bottom case and the palm rest and pry them apart. So we're inside your computer. Here's your battery. There's your motherboard. Just like we unplugged your power adapter, uh, the next step you take in any computer pair Unplug your battery from the motherboard. You want as little power running through the computer as possible when you're working on it. So we're going to follow the battery cable up. It plugs right in there. So when we're going to use a plastic pry tool. And there's a little fitting right there in the center that lets you put this in and press off on it. So that comes unplugged just like that. Now there's a screw here for the battery. We're going to unscrew that. There are two ribbon cables running on top of the battery, and these are held in in a very typical way. There's a plastic clip that comes up. You're going to take your flat pry tool, put it under that clip, and gently pop it up. And then you can slide your ribbon cable right out. I'm going to pop that back down for safety. Those parts are extremely breakable, uh, and if you break it or lose it, uh, even if it falls off, sometimes they're very hard to get on and you break them when you get it on, so be careful not to break those. I'm going to do the same thing on this end of the ribbon cable. Pop it up. Slide the cable out. Pop it back down. Same thing on this side. Pop it up. This side is held down by tape. I'm not sure if, if yours is. If I ever see tape holding components down and I have to remove it, I try to save the tape. Try not to rip it off and lose it. Someone thought it was a good idea at some point, so. So there we go, you have your screw out, ribbon cables off, battery's unplugged. The battery comes right up like that. If you need to replace the battery, you can use these model numbers up here, as well as your volt rating and your ohms rating. That's how you would find the appropriate battery. You can also search for the make, model, and then the word battery on whatever site you're using, eBay, Amazon, whatever site you're using, that usually works as well. The motherboard is located right here. A lot more things are plugging into it than your battery. Uh, so we'll go step by step. Right down here, your speaker wires are coming into a port right there. And this again is a very typical connector. It's got two little lips on either side. So we're gonna put a fingernail in one, pry tool in the other and just slide that right out. Speaker wires unplugged. You come around here, there's another ribbon cable coming from your touchpad. I'm gonna pop that up just like we did on the battery, slide that out, put it back down for safety. Right here there's another ribbon cable coming down, it's got some tape on it. So again I'm going to try to save that tape, I'm going to peel that up very gently, pop that clip up, slide the ribbon out, put it back down. This is your LCD cable, so again kind of the same design as this connector right there. I'm going to put a fingernail that end, pry tool on this end, slide it right out. Here's your Wi-Fi card, which is held down by tape, a screw, and the two Wi-Fi antennas are coming in. So those all have to come undone. So we're going to peel off your tape. Oop, looks like tape was already ripped. 
So one of the Wi-Fi wires came up. I'm going to just pop up the other one. Okay, so the Wi-Fi wires are up. I'm going to unscrew the card. Again, keep the screw with your Wi-Fi card. It's the only one of that size in a computer usually. Slide the Wi-Fi card out. This wire here is coming from your power jack. We can slide that out the same way we did the other ones. It's a little harder, just wiggle it back and forth. It's a little tight in there because it's under the power jack itself. And it looks like that's everything that plugs into the computer. So now I'm just gonna go around and take out your screws. I see one, two, three screws. So that motherboard should come right up. There you go, so there's your motherboard. As you can see, the heatsink assembly is not very complicated in this computer. You don't see a fan or any large uh, copper components. That's because this is a small computer, doesn't produce that much heat, doesn't need a big heatsink. So to access your CPU, we're gonna take out these four screws holding your heatsink down. It comes up, just like that. So there's your CPU. As you can see, it's not easily removable. It's integrated into the motherboard. So you can't easily take that out and replace it. But that's where you would find your CPU if you wanted to clean it off or you apply thermal paste. Again, if you have any questions or comments, check out the FAQs below. It could save you some time getting an answer. Uh, if you do need to leave me a comment or a question, I do try to review those a couple times a day at least. Please subscribe if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer work. Uh, also, please like and share if you found this specific video helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys.